BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Have you ever received a call from someone claiming to be from the IRS, indicating you owe money, sometimes even being threatened to be put in jail if you will not pay? These scams come in many forms. If someone calls asking for money or personal information, hang up. If you think the caller might be telling the truth, call back to a number you know is genuine. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Today tastes like game day at home, like assigned couch seating, like coffee table dining, and an ice cold Coke to cool down the heat. Today tastes like watching football is supposed to, and it never tasted this good. Coca-Cola, together tastes better. Football season is here. That means it's time to load up on some delicious ice cold Coke. Pick up Coca-Cola today. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 9.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Kicks for kids. What is that? We're putting shoes on the feet of kids that need them as we get close to cold weather season, man. These kids are back to school, and they want to have good shoes to wear. That's got to take them through the whole school season. Uh, you know, and they got stuff they're doing, man. And they need these new shoes. These are kids that, you know, don't, you know, some of them are homeless. And Mary's Place takes a, does a lot for homeless people. And any donation you can give us to get these kicks on those kids would help. Shout out to Chad P. who donated 50 bucks to the cause. Mark P. donated Woo! $100. Yeah. And uh, Alan and Cindy. Cindy's part of the 69 Club. That's pretty awesome. Nice. Alan, he's part of the $50 Club. Also awesome. And uh, shout out to Jacob, who said, uh, Jacob Nugent said, dude, I'm so happy that the 69 crew thing took off as a founder of the 69 Club. I want to thank all of you for promoting it and keeping it going. I grew up poor and relied on kind people like you guys and the Rockaholics to donate food, toys, and jackets during the holidays and throughout the winter months. It brings me great joy to know that I'm now paying it back. And you guys make it easy for me to do that. Stay funky, brothers. Oh, from Jacob. We're, we're happy, Jacob. We're glad we could help out. And that's all you got to do. It, does, it doesn't matter, man. If you can't be part of the 69 crew, whatever you can give, a dollar helps. And if you can't, we understand sometimes that happens. But perhaps you can share it on your socials. Maybe your friends could help out. It's Kicks for Kids. Want to thank Mary's Place for you know making sure this all happens. You want more info? You want to make a donation? KISW.com. Let's play Be Migs. It's time to play. Turn down for tequila! Charge down for what? What? Tequila! Tequila! Alright, yeah, there it is. Alright, let's get to our contestants. Oh, there it is. There <laughs> it is, <laughs> there it went. And there it goes. Let's get to Matthew and Bothell. Matthew, are you there? I am. Excellent. Alright, Steve, get out of here. Get out of here! <laughs> for those playing Good morning, home, everybody. Good morning, oh, Matthew. Thanks, Matt. For those playing at home, Matt will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Matthew, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Let's do it. Mark Wahlberg and Dwayne Johnson starred in the 2013 movie titled Pain and What? Pain and Gain. Yes. What year of the early 2010s did Dick Clark die? Early 10s? Early 2010s, yeah. 28, 29, 27. No? no? Uh, that's not you misunderstood. Sorry, buddy. What word means the shakes that come after earthquakes? Seismic? No. What? Say it again. What word means the shakes that come after the earthquakes? Oh, aftershock. Yes. yes. Who played Lydia Dietz in the 80s film Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice with Gina Davis. No. 
Oh, uh, 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 the uh, dark-haired girl. Pass. <laughs> what European nation was divided into two separate states in 1949? Jimmy. Yes. What takes up 50 to 70% of a whale's weight? Fat. No. Well, Never. Yes. What is the only moon in the solar system that has an atmosphere? Uh, Jupiter's. No. Ours, Saturn. No. No. I was oh. looking for the planet name there. One, two, three, four, oh. correct. Okay, then. Well, Matthew, you played. He did. He played, he played slightly better than the person earlier today. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, there that, that that that's something. Yeah. Will you say you're looking for the planet name or the moon name? I was looking for the moon name. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. He was giving planet names. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Gotcha. Not that I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but it helps to know the question. Yeah. Steve. Are you ready? I don't know if I am. They just I just saw in Fanatics. They have more Kraken shirts. Do they really? It's gonna be a Are problem. they the same like designs? Or no, they... they got new looks oh, and stuff. Oh, no. I can't handle this, BJ. I know, dude. They know. I'm just they watching know. my money leave my pocket. Don't right send now. me the links, please. They or know you actually, got a problem. I love that Danny instantly went online. <laughs> yeah, he went to it. <laughs> but I guess I'm ready. Oh, All right. Yeah. Mark Wahlberg and Dwayne Johnson starred in the 2013 movie titled Pain, titled Pain and What? Suffering. No. Pain and Gain? Yes. What year of the early 2010s did Dick Clark die? 2011. No. 2010. No. 2013. No. Oh, it's 2012. Oh. I should have went. Oh. What, what word means the shakes that come after the af- uh, the earthquakes? Um, Aftershock. Yes. Good job, Rev. Who played Lydia Dietz in the 80s film Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Uh, Michael Keaton. No. Oh, Cheryl Ladd. No. That's Shelley it. Long? No. Uh, what what doing? European nation was divided into two separate states in 1949? Spain. No. Italy. No. España. Yes. Uh, what wow. takes up to 50 to 70% of a whale's weight? What? Flubber. No. Blubber. Yes. That's it. What is the only moon in the solar system that has uh, has an atmosphere? Our moon. No. Oh. Blue moon. No. Blue moon. Tasty moon. No. What type of animal was Nala in The Lion King? A lion. Yes. And because of that, y'all tie. Oh, what kind of answer? I mean, you had to give that question for the last one. We yeah, could have that, a... one, that one was a gimme that uh, uh, Matthew didn't quite get to. Uh, so no songs. Matthew, you didn't do as bad as uh, we thought. Yeah. You're tied, Matthew. That's at least, you know, that's, yeah. that's something. Well, those weren't the easiest of questions. Some of them were not. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Some of that. them were misunderstood. That yeah. Happens. Well, thanks for playing, buddy. <laughs> so, Steve, have you ever watched Beetlejuice? Yes. Okay. Because you named nobody on it. I know. Yeah. Like, literally so zero people. Michael you. Keaton was not in Beetlejuice? He was not in it. You're thinking of... Gosh, Bill Murray? No. Wait, Beetlejuice was Michael Keaton? Yeah, Michael he's Keaton Beetlejuice. Star. Yeah, that's oh, Beetlejuice. Oh, star oh sorry. For yeah. some reason, I was thinking somebody else. But no, you're not. You're right. It wasn't. Okay. I was like, wait a second. I'm yeah. But okay. didn't play who's, the dar- who's the yeah. dark-haired girl in Beetlejuice? I, do people forget who she is? No. no. Oh, my known as Big Brown. Um, yeah, there Winter you go. Rider. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Primus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Michael Keaton was in it. I was thinking of Michael McKean for some reason. Um, wow, yeah, he's so. He's a good actor, too. Winona Ryder did play Lydia, Lydia Dietz. You know what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, the only moon in the solar system that has an atmosphere. If you, lo- if you love space, you'll know it. If not, you probably won't. I want to say Triton. You are so close. Yeah. Right? Um, not Trident. Oh. Titan. Oh, Titan. Oh. That's yes. right. Oh, and of course, there's been shows and everything about it in movies. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. should know That's that. That's where Thanos idiot. comes from. I'm an yeah. idiot. Yeah, he comes from Titan. Oh, does he really? Yeah. Oh, good for him. Uh, congratulations to you guys on tying all of that. Yeah, congratulations, <laughs> Steve. Thank you. You did a good job. Nice. We got a London woman who fell out of a car window and onto a busy highway and be like, oh my God, what, was, what happened? What happened was she was trying to be a Snapchat idiot. That's what happened. <laughs> Well, I mean, doesn't she know she should, be, she should be doing that on TikTok, not Snapchat? Good call. Where stupidity lasts forever. Yeah. Uh, the unidentified woman had been hanging out of the vehicle at around 1.30 a.m. on Saturday. Oh, it was in the morning, you know, after maybe some drinking, I bet. And who knows what else. And police wrote on Twitter, quote, It's only by luck she wasn't seriously injured or killed. Hashtag no words. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not something they encounter probably every day. She was treated by paramedics at the scene for non-life-threatening injuries. Here's the thing. And, you know, it's so funny how people are. I, I mean, we are such a cancel society that, 
you know, I think people just think, oh, well, she's going to get arrested, right? And it's like the cops are like, actually, no. And they're going, no, she should be arrested. And the cops are like, look, we, she was an idiot, mm-hmm. but she wasn't driving. She didn't break anything except herself. She didn't harm anyone. Yeah, thankfully. so it, she was just trying to have fun and went overboard. And so we don't arrest people for fun. At least that's how it is over in London. I don't know if we would have arrested her here. Maybe there is some bunch of laws on the books that would say stop being an idiot. I don't know. Yeah, I guess we need to incorporate don't be stupid on social media clauses and like in the in the world of driving. Yeah. Like because I think you could probably make like a, a book about the idiots that have hurt themselves because they wanted to be famous on Instagram. Like all those stories of people taking pictures at the end of a cliff and they end up falling off the cliff and yeah. dying or like getting hurt doing something because it's a TikTok challenge. It's pretty insane to think how many people are hurting themselves just because they want likes or retweets or views on their social media pages. Do you think that she should be arrested? I feel like karma would took, took care of the justice there. I'd say take her phone away for a month. Okay, so you think she should be punished in some way. My thing is, even before social media and smartphones and everything, we did a lot of stupid things to hurt ourselves. And we didn't have smartphones or anything. When I was in middle school, we played like the ABC game or the quarter game where you flick the quarters up against somebody else's knuckles till they bleed. Oh, we played knuckles with cards. With cards? Yeah. You just fling them at people? No, you just take the whole deck of cards and slam it on the person's Ooh. knuckles. Ouch. Why? I can't remember how you win and lose in that game, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I mean, so nobody wins. Thing. Yeah, it's like. But we played that on the bus when I was a kid. Did you do the ABC game? I don't what even the, know what the hell is that? Is. So someone takes your hands and they start just scratching your hand and they'll say A, and you have to think of like a word that starts with the letter A, B, C, and then by the time you get to Z, you have this nice little just cut on your hand. And what's how do you win this game? I don't think you do. You're just bragging rights that you went to the end, probably. Well, you'll just see kids with like these big old scars or scabs on their like the top of their hands. And I, a girl just grabbed me, tried playing with me once, and I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I yeah, I, 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 I'd never played any of those games because I thought, because I'm a gamer. I'm like, so how do I win? It feels like no matter what happens, I lose. What kind of game is this? I think the only winner is the person inflicting the pain. Well, and that's they a whole, yeah. Are, yeah. That's a, that's called a dominatrix, and usually people will seek out your services. I did not seek out yours. <laughs> Take your ABC game and, and, and your card game and get the hell out of here. Got a new survey. They talked to folks who have smartphones and said, okay, what kind of sacrifice would you make for your favorite device? And I wonder, Steve, how you'd feel about this because 40% of people say they would rather be separated from their dog for a month over their smartphone for a month. There's not a chance in hell. There's nothing you can tell me that, I mean, short of like, you know, it's either your kid or your dog. Like that's, that's the only insane conversation that I'd be even willing to entertain not having my dog around me for an extended period of time. You take my phone. If you said dog or phone, like take my phone, throw it in the ocean. I don't Are you surprised that forty percent of the people said the uh, you can take my dog? I am very surprised at that I thought people really were connected to their pets. Yeah, but think about like a household. Not everybody is as connected to the dog. Like maybe that person that they're asking didn't want the dog necessarily, or the dog's a pain in their ass. I see. Well, that would have been me. Your right. name's BJ, possibly. I would have added to that. That's for sure. I would right. have been like, yeah, take the damn dog. As a matter of fact, take my dog and my phone. If you get rid of the dog, I'll give you my phone too. Honestly, I think your daughter was the only one that really went to bat for your dog. <laughs> So. Yeah, Joey was like, this is not what I want. I don't want this hairless freak thing, which is what my wife got because I had allergies. And Joey was like, I wanted a real looking dog. This thing's nuts. I wonder if you should have bought her a real looking dog costume. That would have been funny. <laughs> yeah, just get her a costume that looks makes her look like a dog. What if you need your phone for work, though? And it's like, Sorry, so buddy. then at that point, you're thinking to yourself like, oh, it's either I get fired or I have my dog. I have my dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Time to find a new, got a new job. Any job is going to tell me it's my for... job or the dog. I'm going to be like, kiss my ass. Yeah. What, what do you need your phone for work for? I mean, if you could have any other device, I would imagine you could still have, like connect to the internet with something. Well, yeah. Like what if you're like a DoorDash driver or something? Or yeah. Or you need your phone for that. Yeah. yeah, or Uber. Good point. I think they should be exempt from this. Because they actually are using well, it's it. Not like law. Like no one's being forced to take this. <laughs> oh no! This is survey. gun to the head. You know what happens right if now? You, ABC game, Steve. That's what happens. <laughs> oh, our bloody knuckles. Yeah, that's what happens. It is time for listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. Two zero six four two one rock. Text us at seven seven nine nine nine. What do you want to talk about? Your calls. Your texts at nine seventeen on the rock. BJ and Migs mornings on the rock. 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Are you saving for your child's college education? If so, consider a 529 plan. To find your options, visit savingforcollege.com. 
you will find a comprehensive list of other states' plans along with details, rankings, tools, and calculators. That's savingforcollege.com. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Today tastes like game day at home. Like assigned couch seating. <laughs> like coffee table dining. And an ice cold Coke to cool down the heat. Today tastes like watching football is supposed to. And it never tasted this good. Coca-Cola. Together tastes better. Football season is here. That means it's time to load up on some delicious ice cold Coke. Pick up Coca-Cola today. 9.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. You got something to say. This is the time, but Steve has a rule. Simple rule, BJ. Show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're going to have to gong you. And then say goodbye. Goodbye, old man. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Kyle in Mount Vernon. Kyle, you are on the rock. Good morning, folks. Morning, Kyle. What you got, buddy? Well, the Tesla thing, um, there was a, a company in Portland where I'm from, where I used to live, that uh, we drove Teslas for two years. We were a taxi cab company, the first electric cab company. Uh, right. They're no longer right. around. But I got to drive the Tesla S model for two years. Okay. And, that, uh, and that autopilot was an upload. Like one day it wasn't there, and then the next day we came into work, and the car now had autopilot on it. Ooh, and, so there's a software thing. Isn't that wild? Oh, yeah, do you know if, and, and yeah, that's another side note, you could turn the car, like get out of the car and come back and it's decided to update, like it was scheduled to update at this time and the car will shut off for three hours and upload. So you could be locked out of your car for three hours while it's uploading. But um, wow, that's, the, uh, uh, the autopilot, that. the autopilot, um, you could, you know, you, absolutely, you could drive down the road hands off. And then there were some accidents. Some some people died. There were some cases. Yeah, and we then saw so that. A, and then so a new upload came out, uh, I don't know, a month later or whatever, that if your hands were off the steering wheel, it, it would sense it. After like 15 seconds, it would start to flash on the dashboard. And then after maybe 30 seconds, it would start to beep inside of the car to wake you up, dummy, put your hands back on the wheel. You could be an autopilot, but you had to rest your hands on the wheel. Yeah, I remember hearing that. Yeah. So this guy so was going 93 miles an hour. Somebody, in Alberta. I mean, maybe, you fell, maybe you fell asleep with your hands on the steering wheel. I guess that could have happened. I mean, I mean that's the only way you could do it. Yeah, maybe. I'm sure it's on that, too. There's probably like certain gloves that you can like Velcro to your steering wheels for, for those opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had thought about that. Yeah, hey, you want to fall asleep while driving your Tesla but need to keep your hands on the steering wheel? Yeah. Buy our new gloves available yeah. at Etsy. Yeah. Well, it's nice to know that at least Tesla has put in some systems so that you can't be an idiot unless you really, 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 really want to be an idiot. Well, then shout out to that Canadian guy because he figured out how to be an idiot. Yeah. It's impressive. That's, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I'll ever, if they bring it out in my lifetime, will I ever trust it to get in one of those vehicles by myself and let it drive me somewhere? I don't know if I'll ever trust it because I don't even know if I... There are things right now that I won't do that I think yeah. I would have done in my 20s, but now I'm like, hey, I don't know if I'll do it now. Right. Do I want to take that chance? Do I want yeah. to be that one story where it's like we thought autopilot worked until it slammed into the Fremont Troll. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it works till it doesn't. Yeah. Speaking of cars, someone texted in saying, if you guys could buy any car, money is no object. What are you getting? Ooh. Ooh, wow. The funny thing is... <laughs> I love the money is no object because I was looking at what I'm obsessing over and I don't have the money right now. And it's like, especially when you're buying a house, it's like the last thing I'm thinking about is adding a, a car payment to my situation. But I was like, wow, even though it's the car that I want, if money is no object, it's not all that expensive. It's the Ford Bronco, the new Bronco. Oh, really? I mean, it's That's not nice. cheap. It's still, it's nice that though it's within your reach. But it's like in the, the you know, like I think it starts at like twenty six, twenty seven thousand, and then obviously that maybe is like without a steering wheel or something. I have wheels, I have no idea. <laughs> but you know, maybe like the thirty thousand range, which I'm not saying it's cheap, but some people will be thinking about like a hundred thousand dollar car. Thirty is not on, on a, thirty is not overly extravagant. It just shows what kind of simpleton. I'm like, <laughs> no, like, do you oh, not- sounds awesome. A Ford Bronco. Dude, I'm right there with you. Like, I, my dream car is a Toyota Tacoma, which is what I drive now. The only difference would be, that I think, if I, if money was no object, I would just get all the bells and whistles. Yeah. So, like, blacked out everything. Um, sweet wheels. Yeah, sweet wheels. Like, better, better uh, stereo, maybe. Like, that's, I would just upgrade that. But that's really the car of my dream, so. 
And you've got it. Uh, the, meanwhile, I'm seeing those pictures of the Broncos. They look good, that uh, new model. The new, it looks yeah, awesome. That looks amazing. So I'm torn. Like, I like the dark colors, but then I'm like, also, like, for the stupid side of me, I'd like to get a white one and name it Al after Al Cowlings. <laughs> wow. Because made famous the white boy Bronco. <laughs> of course. Wow. And Rev, the past uh, Lucy would have OJ embroidered in it. <laughs> Okay. No. No. Uh, Rev, you got a dream car? Uh, right now, at this point in time, it would be getting like a specially made or like do it yourself camper van. Ooh. So just one oh, of those things. Does that, that count as a car? Yeah, it's a vehicle. You know, All you sound right. like no. me. No, yeah. I'm with you, I'm with right. you, Steve. I don't know if that's in the rules, but no. I let you say it. I, I respect that. Rev found a way because I think if you were an RV, I'd call BS on you. But it is a camper van. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like one of the ones that would be just like a normal sort of utility van or something that's been modded. Uh, my uh, in-laws, my aunt and uncle in-laws, so whatever those are. Yeah, those guys. Yeah, those ones. They have one that was that they built, and it's fantastic. There's enough room for a couple, um, and you can go basically anywhere with it because it's not too big for stuff. Would you get the ones with like the all-wood interior? Like make it look fancy? Oh, hell yeah. 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 Just Dude, this van life is it's all the rage. Not all the rage, but I see a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, for me, I, w- the I would like, like the living van- in vans. Yeah, I would like the van life, but not to live in, but it would set it up as my mobile board game playing area. Oh, and like, I could, I oh, can bring yeah, all my walk- games to people and go, we don't need a space. Let's just do it in my van. You have a very, in. a very big board game collection, and some of those games are just a huge setup that take you, like, what, three hours to all set right. up? I will get a truck then. There You're you right. Go. I'll get a flatbed. And you can't do it while driving. Like, all the pieces would just go everywhere. Well, so you just well, have to, like, I go to people. Ah, you know, okay. We'll go to, a, like, a beach location. Like board we'll go games to, these, to go. Go to these great ah, vacation locations, and we don't need a right. hotel. We'll just do it in my van. Nice. And I mean play board games, that is. Oh, yeah. 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 Like Vicky's pulled up one like someone who just gutted out there inside of like a regular van and they put like a sink in it, yeah. a table. It's insane, like a bed. Oh yeah. That's pretty awesome. And doing it custom means you can do the different things that you want to do in it, which is yeah. the most fun part about it is making it yours. I like it. All right, Vicky, you got a dream vehicle? Well, I have like a Murphy drums. Like, you know, like a Murphy bed comes down, like <laughs> Murphy electronic, drums. electronic drums come down off the wall, and then I can just play the drums when yeah. I'm bored. That, that is super cool. cool. Yeah. Is it bad that I was picturing you with the drums on top of the car somehow? Well, that, that's, you know, I mean, I, yeah, money's no object. Screw it, I'm doing that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mine I got from the show Supernatural, a 1967 Chevy Impala. Oh, nice. It is so sexy. It's like, I really just want one, mostly because the... The you know Dean and Sam drive it around. Oh, okay. those are cool looking. Yeah. But they're so pretty, and actually, they're not as bad as I thought they'd be. Anywhere between like thirty, and if you get a really fancy one, I guess it's like ninety grand. But like, oh, I wow. can do thirty grand someday in my life. I didn't know you could jump up sixty thousand if getting uh, in the Impala class. Well, That's, I was just looking at like certain damn. websites. It's like oh, fifty, thirty four, one hundred seventy five thousand. Some texture says if money's no object, I'm getting a big long bed crew cab dually truck or duality truck. Over a hundred thousand dollars. Ooh, I don't even know what the hell that is. I don't. Yeah, I just I read don't, a bunch of words that made no sense to me. Don't even know if we're saying it right. But it sounds expensive. Yeah, because it is. Well, that's because he told you it's a hundred thousand. <laughs> Part of me wants to get like an eighty-one uh, station wagon just to troll my wife because she hates those things. Oh, does she? And, with, and the, with the wood season, paneling and everything. <laughs> wood paneling would be a nice touch. Yeah, yeah. Just so I could pull up one day, and be like, "Let's go, babe." And she's like, "I'm not getting in that." I'm like, mm, "It's my car." It's an amazing that that was that. That's what we drove. Yeah, that was the big family vehicle, and now we have, you know, we have better stuff. All right, BJ, what are you doing? What am I? Oh, I told you. Which one was yours? The van. Oh, I, I would get. I oh, would get a van and trick it off. Saying I would do the same thing. Like Rev, I didn't realize that was actually. Your that answer. would be my. Oh, okay. I would get a vehicle big enough to be able to have my mobile, like my mobile game playing area. Got gotcha. you. I wouldn't bring all my games, Vicky. But if I knew what I wanted to bring, you know, I would go. And I usually bring like ten games, and my friends bring all their games. So there's always plenty of games. But I to have like a table to be able to like because I see people do this in California. They take their vehicles, they park in the parking lots down in California, or the beach parking lots, and they're like, there's their view. They open their van door. Sitting and they sit in the van and look at the beach. It's like I mean, it's amazing. They're on a comfortable couch or whatever. They got their beverages and there they are with the greatest view ever. And I'm like, oh man, if I could just find a way to get board games involved in this, this would be a Nirvana for me. Nirvana, yeah. So uh, that would be mine. It would be like uh, I miss my old white minivan because it was so versatile. Uh-huh. I really miss that big vehicle. It at least had windows on the side, right? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We, oh, okay. Yeah. Did yeah. you have, like, that little, like, circle, like, bubble window? Oh, that? that'd be badass. Didn't have that. With the cool airbrushing of, like, a dolphin fighting a tiger or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I didn't or have a wizard a, and a dragon. Didn't, didn't yes. have any airbrush action. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no Frazetta fun for me, unfortunately. 
those vans probably, you know, they attracted good people. Yeah, they did. Totally. Well, I was talking to Sarah because she remembers that van fondly because it was our family vehicle. And, and we went to, we traveled back and forth from Rochester, New York uh, on, uh, on the, uh, on the I-90, as a matter of fact, all the way back to Boston, uh, a lot in that van. We went everywhere. Arizona, that thing was our, it was our urban assault vehicle. We went everywhere. <laughs> so BJ's going for the shagging wagon. Yeah. And Without shagging. When so, so, so you guys don't know what a dually is, L-M-A-O, uh, uh, someone just... We're us. stupid. You yeah. know, we it, really are. I did not know that's what it's called, but now I exactly know what it is. It's a truck with two sets of uh, wheels on the back. Two sets of two wheels on the back. Oh, that's, oh, that's oh. what they call a dually. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, so it's not a it's not a vehicle name. It's actually no. just a type of... Oh, <laughs> it's a type. Yeah, the dual, oh. re, dual rear wheel truck. Oh, yeah. my God. We're stupid. Well, yeah. there you go. Now yeah. we learned something today. Oh. I'm not going to remember that. Are you? <laughs> yes. Are you really? All well, right, dually. I'm going to remember it today. Okay. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Tomorrow is a whole different day. That's true. 206 421 Rock, Texas at 77999. Listeners on the loose. All right, someone said, What do you guys think are the best albums? Not necessarily your favorite album, but an album where every or almost every song is good. For me, the obvious choice is Appetite for Destruction from Guns N' Roses. And then some other ones as well. Ooh. Pretender's first record, uh, The Knack as well. I would agree with GNR. Appetite for Destruction is perfect. I think everybody says that. Production wise, I just yeah. love the way the album sounds, the performance that they did, the songs, the songwriting, everything about it. I just love that. And record. you can listen to that album like straight through. Yes. So this is this is a taste based thing, isn't it? As opposed to what people consider an amazingly done album. You know what I mean? Like there are professionals that will tell you this is amazing, and then there are people who go, "I just believe this is a great album through and through." It's it's because Boston's first album. A lot of people believe that is an amazing album, technically as well as there's but not the question a bad song. is what do you think is so? The best album? So that's the thing. I'm going to go with Boston anyway because I okay. believe it is a good album, even though it's also critically well received as far as being a great album through and through. That first album they did, Boston, but that's back. That's back in the day, and that's my childhood. I mean, that was 15 when that came out. I believe yeah. 14, 15, and that was just that swept everybody as like the greatest rock album of all time. Some people still think it is. I wouldn't I, even put that in my top 100, but that's cool. Really? No, really, <laughs> not even. Wow, never listened to it. Zero interest to either. Oh, I've wait, heard, wait, wait, I've wait. heard some songs from it. So you've never listened to, to it. the entire record? No, I am very surprised you don't even have a design. I have zero to- interest in listening to Boston. Wow. Yeah. That's fascinating to me because of just the technical, the, the fact that the guy did everything himself. That's a New Yorker for you. What do you mean? Oh, because it's Boston. Because Boston. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, I just, look, I get, for me, I would understand because I'm not a, a music guy like you are. That, that does surprise but me. They've never struck me as being a band that I want to listen to. I've heard their songs. They've done nothing for me. If I hear their songs wow. on the radio, I change the station. Is that true? Wow. 100%. I'm not saying they're bad. But it's a personal no, t- opinion. Yeah, taste is taste. I'm like, not, I'm not saying they about suck. Taste. I'm not saying they're the worst band ever. Yeah. None of that. But they do absolutely nothing for me. But then again, per, um, uh, uh, I was going to say Pert, uh, Rush. They never did anything for me yeah, until same. like I was in my late 30s. And all of a sudden, like my eyes were open. I was like, my ears were open. I'm like, holy crap. I can't believe I missed out on this band. Yeah. So, so who knows? Maybe when I'm like 70 or 90 or about to die... <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, the Boston band's pretty good. BJ was right. Well, look, it taste is taste. I'm not going to argue with you about taste because there's a lot of things that I know are good, but I just don't like them myself. You know what a record I just listened to recently just on a whim, and I forgot how great it was? And it's, a, it's not a huge name band. I know Daniel will know of them, maybe a couple other people. It's a band called Rise Against. Yeah. Their album, Appeal to Reason, is great from beginning to end. If you if you want to just listen to a really like good, loud rock band that's like just got songs with meaning, man, every song on that record is great. All right, Danny, what about you? The Offspring Smash. It always goes back to the Offspring. It always goes back to the it's Offspring. It's go back to the Offspring. We know Rabbit's Orgy, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Just because I keep on listening to it, I know it's not a great It's got to be Godhead then, right? No, oh, but again, man. another Corn. band. Oh, gosh. No, you guys. Actually, one straight through would be Fleetwood Max Rumors. Like, I can Whoa. just put that on right. no matter what. That and is I so do, amazing, considering like yeah, everything it, you like. And it, yeah, exactly. And it was a recent thing. I just recently decided, maybe a year or so ago, to listen to it. And I was like, no, this is really good. Let's do the Steve check. Steve, uh, Sleeping no. Mac, do anything for you? I, my old band, we covered Tusk. I thought that was fun. Uh, that's about <laughs> it. I thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Two amazing bands from the same time period, really. Gosh, yeah. I'd rather yeah. listen to Fleetwood Mac over Boston. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, they're both good bands. Ricky, <laughs> what you got? 13th Step by a Perfect Circle. Which is, oh, it's, it's, I'm oh. basing it off of like I that's love, a really good record, right? It's just I feel like every song is just fantastic, and I love Linkin Park, and I love all these other bands, but 
I don't necessarily love every single song on every record, and I feel like a thir- 13th Step is that album I will listen to from start to finish, no problem. And I think I like A Perfect Circle just a little bit more than I love Tool. I don't know. Get don't the know. hell that out of this. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's, that's just wrong. You pick the topic, you guide the show, it's listeners on the loose. 206-421-ROCK, text us at 77999. Your calls, your texts at 933 on the rock. BJ and Mix mornings on the rock at 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. I uh, got a text message about Dick's, the burgers, oh, okay. of course. Yes. Uh, they said, hey, guys, I just tried Dick's Burgers after 30 years living here in Washington State. Ooh. They didn't like this. They said I was disappointed, and I didn't like the sauce on the deluxe. However, the cheeseburgers what? were yummy, and so were the shakes. My wife didn't like the sauce either. Wow. She doesn't like the dick sauce? Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, she does yeah. That's yeah. the best part. Uh, well, on you the know. Deluxe, that's why deluxe is the, oh, it's the sauce. Unless maybe the sauce hits in the wrong way. It's the only thing I can think, because I'm with you. I think the sauce is amazing. I mean, the sauce is like the opposite of the band Boston. It's great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I would love. I, we still haven't heard too many people doing the In and Out Dicks comparison because I feel like I'm still the only person that thinks that I'd rather have a Dicks Deluxe over anything from In and Out as far as burger wise. The problem is we don't have an In and Out here. I like to be able to try them around the same time. You know, like well, one still fresh in my mouth. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can have a Deluxe, and then like ten months later, I'm going to California. I'll try an In and Out. I'll be like, well, I don't know. I don't have a frame of reference. Well, if you have a Deluxe, right, and mm-hmm. you know, you you just put in your brain what you're going to get. Like you just know, your mind tells you, we're going True. to Dicks. I know what I'm getting. That's and why I don't so- touch the cheeseburgers because it's like I'm. I feel like I'm at, I'm enjoying Dicks, yeah. but it doesn't have the same thing. I use that as an appetizer. I have like a cheeseburger just to wet it's my like, whistle. You guys aren't the fry guys. Yeah, it's that's so weird. weird. Sorry about that, buddy. It's yeah. fair. Yeah, you know. But uh, yeah, I would like to. I would. I I know I'm in the minority, but I really felt it was just no dicks to me. It really when I I and and I think I'm the only. I don't hear many other people say that who do go who bend to both who you know mm-hmm. dicks and in and out. I uh, I'm, I'm a dicks man. Yep, someone says I'd rather listen to Boston than Pearl Jam any day. Well, I don't know if I go that far myself, and and only because I'm now a recent Pearl Jam fan. Mm-hmm. I uh, I the, the the problem I have with Boston is they just weren't prolific enough. I don't know what the hell their issue was, you know. Because I will say this: they're no Tool, and I think you know Tool when they take a long time between the albums, it's worth it. And I never felt that way about a Boston album. As mm-hmm. much as I like Boston, I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. I can't wait what X amount of years for this. I, you know, and I don't think Boston's latest albums ever were as good as their first one. Whereas Tool, I have enjoyed every album they put out. So um, I would I would say Pearl Jam for me much more than Boston. Uh, you know, uh, oh, I, yeah. yeah, definitely. I, I, and look, I'm a Boston guy. I grew up listening to Boston, but I just think Pearl Jam's a better band. And I would put, like when we were talking earlier about this all came from a text that asked us what we thought was like the uh, the great record like great from beginning to end and i would put pearl jam's first two records on that as well like that they definitely make the criteria of of to me awesome from the very beginning to the very last song where i'm like okay i can listen to that record again as soon as it finishes uh so i want to talk about the kraken uh did we see that they have an infant kraken robe for a tater top i did see this stop telling steve things like this he's already just gone with uh, the new items come out and steve is just continually going into the poor house have you seen this is a little bathrobe oh, that is so adorable and, the, and it gets embroidered with the name dude i want a uh, bathrobe like that right exactly uh, seriously i wear bathrobes I, I take that in a heartbeat like if they do like a baby size at least after tatum grows too big for it you can give it to your dog that's true I mean, it's sixty bucks. I better get my money's worth. Yeah, right. The, wait, that robe, the little baby robe, is sixty. <laughs> yes. Oh, the big bathrobe. Well, it's robe's personalized. Be uh, yeah, my personalized bathrobe cost me about one hundred and twenty bucks. So. All right, then. Wow, totally yeah. worth it though. Is that a Kraken oh, picnic amazing. basket? I see. That's a Kraken infant personalized medium gift basket. It's funny though because <laughs> I already have one for the devils. That was a gift that my uh, my brother and my sister in law sent me when oh. uh, little Tater Tot was born. Yeah. Yeah, they got plenty of stuff for the children. They got bibs. Oh, yeah. They've got it all, baby. Yeah. Somebody even says Kraken scarves, satin starter jackets, slides, more Kraken kids' clothes, and socks for BJ. There goes payday for oh. Marty and Yelm. Okay, put that on the Christmas list. Kraken socks, definitely. Yes. They got Kraken socks? Oh, oh man. I want I, this, how, how do we not see those? I want well, the starter jacket. Oh. The starter jacket's pretty sweet. 
Oh, look, oh, look at all those Kraken socks. I would. I like all of them. <laughs> well, some are for children. Do you really want to get those? Okay. Well, I mean the designs. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the designs for both men and, or for adults and children. Yeah, I like both designs. <laughs> And frankly, I wouldn't mind an anchor design. I, I still hopefully will get an anchor design crack in something. Because I have all the S's, but I love that anchor. Hint, hint. Oh, I children. Was, yeah, these, right. kids have, these kids are set. I've done the, I even have my local, I have my buddies at Zulu saving games for Christmas. So they just got to go pick them up. So these kids don't even have to worry about shopping for me. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm making it easy for them. Dude, it's fun. Like when we went to like Fred Meyer the other day and saw a couple people rocking cracking shirts. And like you give each other a nod. I'm like, this is so awesome, man. Yeah. It's fun to be on the ground floor of something that you created. There is, it's like I, when I was in Jacksonville for the inaugural, the inaugural season of the Jaguars, and it was awesome. It was awesome being there for the first of that. And of course, a lot of Sounders fans know what that's like here as well. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And it's, and it's that, that franchise has done okay for last I checked. The Sounders? No, yeah. Sounders. They, I don't know. I mean, they play tomorrow. They got, they got Danny as a fan. I'm not sure that's okay. <laughs> you know. They got the Timbers tomorrow. Big oh, game. but you, nice, big you, game. Are you still wanting to be the troll and be a Timbers fan? Well, that was just an inside joke that I never said on the oh, air. Oh, you never said that on the air? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the right. whole point was this. Is the, the, but I would do that to troll my friend. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. But oh, I obviously enough. root for the, the Timbers. Yeah, just a troll. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You know what? I, I'm all about the troll life. You know, why not? No, I'm rooting for the Sounders. Of, of course, course you are. But- 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. All right, we got a text message again about albums that are great from beginning to end. Everclear, Sparkle, and Fade. Great album. That is Ooh. a great Everclear record. Wow, yeah. Man, we just, I love that, the, that we got all the 90s alt rock people listening. Uh, live Throwing Copper from, oh, great from yes. beginning to end. And yeah. then, Daniel, like this one, Enema of the State by Blink 182. <laughs> I was listening to that yesterday morning. It's fantastic. That's really? a good call. Those are very, very good calls. Or it's way too mature for me, Ox. <laughs> That's true. Wow. Or take off your pants and jackets. Really good. Too. That is my favorite album title of all time. Is that the one that has? That's the one that has "Stay Together for the Kids." Yes, that's such a great song. It's such a good. Al- the whole album is mm-hmm. is amazing. But yes, good song. All right. Uh, somebody wanted to know what is your fork in the road moment in life. Mine happened two times between flying lessons and hockey as a teen. Then in college, deciding whether to pursue drumming in my rock band or flying. I've been a captain for Alaska Airlines for over 20 years now, and that's Sean and Bonnie Lake. Ooh. There's a, yeah, there's been a lot, because I was going to be either a stand-up comic or a radio guy. Mm -hmm. And back when I was in Rochester, New York, over 30 years ago, I was doing both and trying to figure out which one I should do. And um, oh, I wish I could remember his name because he's a comic that people know. But he uh, he took me aside because he was the headliner and I was uh, I was doing the, basically the emceeing. And so I got to see a lot of national comics at the time. A lot of folks were helpful. Uh, Andy Kindler, that's who it was. Okay. So Andy Kindler uh, took me aside and I'm he's like, hey man, you know, because he just met me and I talked about comedy and he and he said, all right, wait, you want to do comedy for a living? I said, yeah. I, he goes, but you're on the radio. Because we had talked to him on the radio earlier. He said, man, every comic wants what you have. They want to be able to be creative but stay in one place and not have to travel. He says, you've already got the dream. He goes, I would love to do what you do right now. And Andy Kindler at the time and and even now, Andy Kindler is a very successful writer in the world of uh, sitcoms. And he's done good comedy stuff. And he's had a great career. And yet he still said, man, I think you should do radio. I would. And that's when I decided, okay, I will focus on radio and not stand-up comedy. Oh, yeah, you got to tell him that one day. I don't know when. But. I don't know. Whenever I see him again, I don't know if I've ever seen him since that That's moment. That's kind of cool. Like, yeah. I, mean, I don't know how he would like, he'd be like, oh, I'm glad I told you to get out of our industry. That's one less person I had to compete against. It might be very That's probably why he told you that. <laughs> You're probably right about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my fork was definitely I was going to either get into the world of uh, business and finance or become an uh, actor of the adult variety. And oh, yeah. Then I just did radio instead. <laughs> So well, I'm glad, pr- you took, I'm glad you took this question seriously. Yeah. Three-pronged fork. I got you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's like, it's Tripod like, is yeah. what we call it. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like the twigs and the berries. Which yeah. way am I going? Yeah, uh, I chose for the left berry. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well. I don't know. <laughs> Was there a time, though, when you were doing your band that you would, just, you would decide There's, between radio and the band? Um, there were a couple of very brief moments when my earlier my band was getting courted by a label. This is way back in the day. That's when Harvey Danger broke big. So we were riding the coattails pretty fierce of Harvey Danger because they were our band, our practice space. We shared a practice space at one point with Harvey Danger and Death Cab for Cutie. Nice. Uh, the, of those three bands, one of them did not succeed. I'm, you could guess which one that was. <laughs> <laughs> but we were asked to go on tour with the, those guys. And then there was a, a record label that was interested in our band because they were like, well, Flagpole said is taking off and this is a band that they're recommending and this is a band so there was that moment where I was like early in the radio and I'm like wow what am, that's a decision I hope I get to make and we never got to make that decision it was like it fell apart rather quickly 
uh, as far as the op- it's funny because the the label people are like yeah we just we're looking more for like a Buck Cherry kind of a band oh. and so for the longest time I hated Buck Cherry oh. <laughs> not, not because yeah. I didn't like the band as, and I loved their record it was like when their debut broke big and I was like oh the band's awesome but it always like triggered in my head I'm like they that ba- those bastards had to be successful because the label that was interested in us decided, oh, we're going to go a different direction and you guys didn't have that Buck Cherry vibe. So that was the closest I ever came to it and I, I don't know what I would have done at that time. Honestly, it, it would just had to have depended on like what we were being offered because back then it was a whole different time when it came to music and the record yeah. industry. If they were going to back up the truck, who knows what would have happened? That's, I think, isn't that something? Because I love both. So yeah. at that time, and I was so new into radio, it wasn't like as if I felt like, well, I'm just throwing away a career. I'm like 20 something years old. Yeah. I, there was not a worry in the world at that time. I had no bills to worry about. Yeah. Except for that Discover card that I signed up for for a bag of Skittles in college, and the interest rate was ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> but besides that, that, besides that, I mean, uh, you know, your fiscal life has gotten so much worse. <laughs> we had then. more time to hear that story. And yeah. I feel like the record label, oh, sunglasses and a bag of Skittles, Rev. That's okay. it. Okay. I think we got the story. Thanks. I think, yeah. I think, I think easy, was, was an easy mark, is what the story is. <laughs> So That's I really didn't have a massive fork in the road. <laughs> yeah, wow. I, I mean, I, I, I you know, it, I think that's really cool when you talk, especially with people that are, you know, in a business of performing arts, and they have multiple ways they can take that business. Mm-hmm. It always fascinates me. Like, oh, I could have been this, but I decided to do this. Uh, you know, like that dude's story, uh, pilot, and what else was he going to be? Uh, music was one of them, and, and then and a pilot. Yeah, yeah, which you know, and uh, that's awesome, man. I wonder if I've flown. I hate Mister Texter. I Sean. fly. I fly. Who's that? Sean. Sean. I, I go to Santa. Uh, Santa a lot. Don't know if you ever pilot that, but if you do, you know, ask for me. Ask for me when you get on there and say, "Hey, we got a good thing." And hey, BJ, you want the plane? And I'll say hi. I'm sure he's going to do that. I know a lot of. I know he a couple might, of Alaska actually. pilots, but they never fly my route, uh, or they don't want people to know that I know them. Maybe there's there. That. Well, Sean, uh, be on the lookout for a BJ. Yeah. <laughs> what? All right. Well. That's a funny thing to say to a pilot. I'm sure that never happens. All right. Uh, we'll have to get the rest of the guys some other time. Maybe tomorrow. Find yes. out their forks in the road because we have a big question. That they have homework to, to work on. Yeah. Right. Do your homework. What do Ryan Castle and a muffler have in common? I'm going to tell you at 950 on The Rock. BJ and Mix Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. And now... The Ryan Castle question of the day. What's your Ryan Castle and a muffler have in common? Uh, a loud tailpipe. Yeah, a loud tailpipe. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Is there some tailpipe jokes today? Uh, uh, there's a lot of Steve jokes. Oh, yeah. Something, something, Steve and a banana. Uh-huh. Both fall for a banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> Both can be stopped by a banana in the tailpipe. There it is. Mm-hmm. And they both keep Steve's hands warm in the winter. They do. Oh. Let me tell you about this fine person, this gentleman in England who got pulled over the other day for driving with an illegal muffler, tinted windows, no license or insurance, and he was drunk. That guy's a winner right there. Uh, he tried to get out of it, though, by giving the cops a fake name. But what he didn't realize, that one of the cops knew his face because they went to school together 20 years ago. Oh, <laughs> That's not cool. You're like, hey, wait, Jimmy, I know you. Wait. What, are you. what are you doing, Jimmy? Your name isn't Dick Fitzwell. That's not true. No. I know you. Yeah. From high school, you were voted most likely to use a fake name when driving drunk. Your name's yeah. Peter. Yeah. Fitzwell. <laughs> oh, man. Cops posted about it on Twitter, and somebody responded by saying, boy, I bet the next high school reunion is going to be a little awkward. Yeah. Ryan Castle, he is not awkward, but he does have a 12-pack. That's what he has, and that's coming up next. BJ and Miggs, play of the day. You know what I mean? As far as the way she want to insult people, that's just a- The BJ ball gag. <laughs> now shut up, BJ. We need oh. to use that one more. Wow. <laughs> Was that was, oh that was designed to let someone else get a word in edgewise? I think so. Yeah. Man, sometimes you just got cold in here, you don't even realize it. Yeah. The BJ Ball Gag. <laughs> now shut up, BJ. <laughs> BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. If I file for bankruptcy, do I have to appear in court? That makes me nervous. Going to court is never something something that's easy to do. However, when you file bankruptcy, you usually only have to attend one hearing at the courthouse. 
of course, I'll be there with you. And when you go to court, it's not before the judge. It's actually with the trustee or the trustee's attorney. One of the one of the things that's, that's critical in a bankruptcy is that you give your attorney and the court all of the all of your information. You list all of your assets and all of your creditors. That's what we're trading for your discharge is your true and honest uh, disclosure of your assets and liabilities. And so the court hearing is just usually about a five minute deal where you show up and, and reaffirm and, and swear that all the information you've given the court and your attorney is correct. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. What would you do if your wallet or purse were stolen? Have you done a wallet audit? Make a list of all the items in your wallet or purse. If you have automatic payments associated with a card, make a note of that as well. Keep the list in a safe place at home so you have a list of everything you need to cancel and replace. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.